Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're getting started with malware analysis, or even if you've been doing it for a while, the constant flow of new tools, scripts, books, posts, and articles can feel a bit overwhelming. In this video, I'm gonna share six practical strategies to get started with and sustain your malware analysis journey. Let's get into it. Now, when considering how to perform analysis, we have a tendency to get caught up in the tools. And it's for good reason, because using the right tools can save us a ton of time. But when you're starting out in the field of malware analysis, focusing too much on the tools can be a distraction and frankly, a bit of a trap where we convince ourselves that we're being productive, but in reality, we're spending more time planning how to do the thing than actually doing the thing which is analyzing malware. So if you're relatively new to malware analysis, my recommendation is to, and this is tip number one, commit to a tool set. Now I get it, commitment is hard, but if you stick with a set of reputable tools for a period of time, it'll free up some mental space and make room for actually learning the skill of malware analysis. So in case you're looking for some suggestions, here are the bare minimum tools that I would rely upon today if I was getting started with malware analysis. First, you have to choose some sort of virtualization software. I use VMware, but there are others out there. Next, you need a virtualized operating system to analyze malware safely. If you spend most of your time analyzing Windows malware, like I do, you'll probably wanna go with a Windows OS. Once you have an op operating system, you need to think about how you're going to approach the essential components of malware analysis. So for static file analysis, where you're trying to learn about the file without actually executing it, I'd go with PE Studio. For behavioral analysis, where you will execute the suspicious program to better understand its impact, I suggest a combination of Process Hacker, Process Monitor, Redshot, and Wireshark. For dynamic code analysis or debugging, X64 Debug would be my choice. And for static code analysis, I prefer Ghidra, but there are other options out there, the point is pick one. Definitely check out Mandiant's Flare VM for a great way to get started with some of these steps. Moving on to tip number two, read less, reverse more. It feels like there is a nonstop stream of new stories, blog posts, and articles, and there are countless stories evolving at any given moment. Just keeping up to date with cybersecurity news can feel like a job of its own. Well, while it's obviously useful and important to be aware of current events, we need to balance that with the reality that most people learn best by doing, not reading. A quote that comes to mind is, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. By the way, there are some debates online regarding the origin of that quote, so rather than add fuel to that fire, I'll let the angry people of the internet decide. So if learning malware analysis is a high priority goal for you, consider making more time to actually analyze malware and prepare yourself for the reality that carving out that time might mean you're reading less, but learning more. So you've made some time in your busy schedule to actually analyze malware, but what do you do with that time? That's where tip number four comes in, which is to mirror mastery. The idea here is to emulate malware analysis you find in technical, well-written articles or even videos this approach is helpful because the published content basically serves as a guide for your analysis. Contrast that with just picking a random executable that may or may not be malicious. In that case, it's hard to tell if you're on the right track with your analysis and if your conclusions are correct. This is a strategy I still use to this day, even with almost a decade of experience analyzing malware, because going back to tip number two, if I read about some cool analysis technique or evasion approach that I haven't been exposed to before, I'm much more likely to actually remember and understand what's described if I analyze the sample instead of just reading about it. And if you want some examples of some write-ups you can use for practice, check out the description below. Tip number four is to make it fun. Even as someone who has been doing this for a while, if I hit a wall during malware analysis, it can be stressful and frustrating. And during those times, I have to remind myself that I do actually enjoy the journey of understanding malicious code. And the most challenging investigations are usually the ones I learn the most from. So make it fun by reminding yourself that you maybe enjoy the thrill of the investigation. Switch up your environment by doing your work from a couch instead of a rigid desk or chair, or work from a coffee shop. Maybe have an alcoholic beverage if that's your thing. I said one alcoholic beverage, not five. Basically, do whatever you can to make the experience a bit more relaxing and enjoyable. And often when you're in that state, you'll find that you're simply more creative with your analysis approaches. And speaking of fun, if you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Tip number five is a simple yet powerful concept that can supercharge your learning process, and that is to pay it forward. The basic idea here is to teach what you learn to someone else. Now, hold on. When I say teach, I don't mean you have to buy a sweater vest or add elbow patches to your blazer. Just imagine showing a colleague that new technique or tool you just used, or even casually sharing the cool thing you picked up today with a family member over dinner. The magic lies in knowing that you're about to explain your newfound knowledge to someone else. The act of teaching, no matter how informal, pushes you 
to engage more deeply with the subject matter in a way that cements your understanding of that information. And guess what? It's not just you who benefits. The person you share with gets a nugget of wisdom too. And finally, tip number six is aim to automate. After every analysis effort, spend some time, even five or 10 minutes, considering how you could streamline aspects of your analysis. Maybe you could write a Python script to automatically decode embedded strings or create a YAR rule to identify similar malware. But suppose you don't know how to do any of that or what that means. That's okay. Just take a step back from whatever analysis you've done so far and identify any part of your workflow that seemed tedious or repetitive. The point is just reflecting on your manual process and how you could optimize it will steer your mind in the right direction. And if you do that for every analysis you perform, you'll be far more likely to identify patterns of interest and opportunities for automation. So there you have it. Those are my six tips to kickstart your malware analysis journey. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll like these as well. And if you wanna see more malware analysis content, please consider subscribing to this channel. I'll see you next time.